Hi guys, I just have a very quick video um, to record. This has been on my mind for a little bit. At work, I've been troubleshooting issues that kind of stem from this problem that I'm gonna talk about. Not really a problem, um, but just a warning about using message handlers and because of the asynchronous behavior, the kind of bugs you might get, as with anything that executes asynchronously. I'll talk about the situation that I found at work um, that resulted in bugs, maybe 10% of the time. And if you've been developing Ignition or software in general, you know that those are the worst bugs to find and fix. But I kind of want to make a very simple project to demonstrate my point and then talk about the scenario that I found at work and just kind of the, the, the my more cautious approach that I have now to message handlers. And it only applies in certain cases, which I'll talk about and actually show an example from the exchange. So for this, I wanna set up a very simple view. I'll just call it view, whatever. And in this view, I want to, yeah, let's add a button here. It's not very important. It's gonna be a very simple project as you'll see, but I wanna demonstrate a point. So let's add a script on action perform to the view. And then let's do something like system perspective print. And then we'll print first statement. And just like this. Hopefully my camera's not shaking. My desk is not very stable. Okay, so I'll just do this. And then as you would expect, if I launch this session here and open my console, you'll see that when I click this, it'll print the two statements. Very trivial, simple example. Okay, so let's make it interesting now. And hopefully this brings up the issue I wanted to talk about. Something that you should keep in mind when using message handlers. So let's go to the root container. We'll add a message handler. We'll call it like print debug or something. We'll set it to the page scope. Maybe that's something we can uh, try the view scope and see if it performs any differently. But let's set this to the page scope and then let's from this message handler, let's do a system actually just print this. Okay. Okay, just like that, and I'm gonna copy this here, and go back to my button. And then in between these, oops, in between these is where I wanna call this, dot send message just to make it interesting. Okay, now if you're used to Python scripting or any sort of scripting language, uh, you would think that these would execute one after the other, which is true. Python's an interpreted language, so usually it'll execute one line after the other, just like this. However, this is not necessarily true, even with a trivial example like this, but then I'll talk about a more advanced example, something that's actually real world. So let's just go ahead and save this, go back to our session. Okay, just like this, let me open the console again. And you see that when I execute it, it doesn't print in the way you would expect. So just to refresh that in your memory, I'll pull this up here. You can see that I'm printing the first statement and then running the debug message, which is which just prints print from message handler and then printing my second statement like this. But then what actually prints in the console is a bit different. And this is the warning I wanted to bring up. This is where it comes from. The reason why it happens like this is because perspective messages or message handlers are asynchronous. So they run at a different thread and there's no guarantee that um, the order that you put your statements in this case is just printing, but it can be more complicated than that. Uh, like it was in my case, it was a DB call, a database call. Um, 
So anything you put in, in this order, there's no guarantee that that's the order is gonna execute it. it. It is generally the case, but when you introduce message handlers, it gets a little trickier. So just to back up what I'm saying, if you go to the forum, um, this lovely gentleman asked this question. I think I've seen him on the Discord. He asked a question that I've had myself, basically what the difference is between a message handler that is scoped to the view and just a custom method that you can put on a root container. And then Carl, I believe is his name, he gives an explanation of kind of basically the difference is um, it's not tied to the hierarchy. Uh, message handler is not tied to the component hierarchy like a custom method is. Um, that's basically the difference, but he does uh, mention that the message handler execution is asynchronous. This is a, a very important thing to understand because if you don't understand this and you're doing things like making DB calls, database calls, either inserting stuff and retrieving them, then you're gonna get unexpected behavior and all kinds of weird bugs. I can say that from experience. Uh, because I'm not very bright to begin with, but then uh, finding these kind of bugs is just makes you pull your hair out because it's not very consistent. The behavior um, can be, you know, one thing, one instance, and then the next time you run it, it behaves differently. And I found out the reason was because of message handlers and just the fact that they run asynchronously. And that seems to be documented, at least in the forums. I didn't see it in the documentation page for message handlers, for prospective message handlers. I think that should be, uh, if I were to propose like a change, I think that should be kind of called out in the message handler section because it's not something I read in the documentation or even really remember from the training. I'm not saying it's not in there. I just didn't remember it, but it's very important to understand, I believe as you get comfortable with message handlers. And don't get me wrong, I love using them. It's just this one case here, which I'll talk about. This was the setup. In our project we have, I think we imported this, this exact um, exchange resource, which it's a very nice resource. Uh, it's a simple but very nice like user interface. I think I've chatted with Ray as well in our Discord maybe, I don't know. Couldn't tell from the username, but it might've been him. Um, he works for IA. He's like a UI guy. I've seen a lot of his projects um, or like snippets he puts out. He's very good at UI design, uh, just as you can see here with these pop-up windows. The problem is these are set up in a way that accept a message handler name as a parameter. Um, so like there's one generic pop-up view. If I were to download this, I'm too lazy. I should have done that so I could show you actually what it looks like. Um, but there's one view. So the, basically you see here four pop up, but it's actually only one view. And then you pass in all the parameters and then it'll either be like a success or a warning or an error or an info pop up. So what happens when you click on these um, acknowledge buttons or these confirm buttons? Well, you want something different to happen every time. So if you click on in this screenshot, if you click on I know, you want, it's a confirm message, so you wanna, you know, do something different than if you were to click on accept, you know. And how it's differentiated is by passing in a message handler. So if we look at docs, let's look at this. Um, so if you just look at perspective message handler, so let's look at this function here. It has two parameters. One is required here, the message type. That's basically in our example, that's what we called print debug, I think, or debug print, can't remember. And then the other one is a payload and then a scope. So inside of this project here on the exchange, there's a message handler. That's basically the name of your message. And then there's also a payload. The problem is, uh, I think the context that I was troubleshooting, it was a basically a confirm um, message because there was a procedure that you were initiating. So we had a button on the screen 
and I wanted confirmation because the procedure was very involved. It did a bunch of stuff in the background. And uh, for our, for the business case, there was no way to undo it. So I wanted to be doubly sure that, you know, they were actually the user or the operator um, did everything intentionally. So it was behind a few clicks. And then when you click the, uh, in this case, I know, or when you click the affirmative button on the pop-up view, then it would run a message handler and it would do a DB call, it would call a procedure and just do a few DB calls back and forth. And that's where the bug came from because in a certain instance I would, so in the message handler, I would insert a record um, and then back in my main script where, you know, where I click the button that would launch the pop-up after that, I would retrieve that inserted record. Well, hence where the bug came from is because there's no guarantee. I don't even know if any of this is making sense. I should have had an example ready, but there's no guarantee that they're going to be executed in the order um, that you specify them. So just to go back here, what I'm talking about. So I had a, basically it was this, there, I was calling a function that wraps this, but open pop-up just like this. And then inside of the pop-up, I called the message handler that it, that ran a procedure, a stored procedure in the database. And then after, you know, some lines down, I had a system DB dot run named query, and then whatever, get new ID for further processing, you know, like later in the script. Sometimes I got, <laughs> weird behaviors. And all of that is to say, because message handlers are asynchronous, you need to be careful with how you use them. And now that I think about this whole scenario, so it's kind of, I think it's a balancing act because you want to have reusable views and templatized views like this. And the easiest way to have them templatized to where you can do a different action um, based on the context you're running these pop-up views this is a very good example. This is exactly what uh, the issue I was seeing. So you want to create like a generic view like this, where you can just call it all over the place. The problem is though, is when is what happens when you click on these buttons. So the cancel button is fine. It'll just close the pop-up easy enough, but all of these different buttons, you want it to run like a different action, right? Depending on the context you call it in. And the way it's set up is with the message handler, but message handlers are asynchronous. There's, that's a warning. There's no guarantee that how you call your pop-up in your script, it's actually pretty much guaranteed that it's not going to execute in that order as you saw. So if we go back to this example here, even though, even though in my script, um, just like this, let me open this again. So even though in my script, I'm calling your first statement and then I'm printing print from message handler and then calling the second one, you see how it actually executes here because it's asynchronous. So I thought this would print an order when I was visualizing how I was gonna set this up. So then I would have to add a time.sleep, but I don't even have to add a time.sleep inside of the message handler. It just prints out of order automatically. Hopefully this demonstrates a point um, that you can be cognizant of whenever you use message handlers. Um, yeah, I read through this and it doesn't really mention it in the documentation. I feel like it should. I think that's an important thing to bring up, at least to have like a disclaimer towards the top. Maybe it does in the component. I would have to look again, but it's not something I really thought about until I had to debug a, a funky situation. So hopefully that made sense. This is more of an advanced topic. Message handlers um, are more of an advanced topic to begin with. Uh, people find them a bit trickier. I talked to some people who do uh, trainings for inductive automation and message handlers are always kind of a sticking point for new users in Ignition. So maybe I'll create more videos around them. Uh, they're very powerful. But the only downside I found is this exact scenario is that there's no, you have to use them in a way, you know, in 
in a context where the timing doesn't matter. Something can execute in the background, it doesn't really matter. So in this example here, or in the example with the pop-ups, for example, if you just had, you know, you call the pop-up, pop-up comes up, and if the operator or the user clicks confirm, it just insert, inserts a debug message or like an audit message in the background, no big deal. You can do that all day long. Uh, you don't need to automatically, uh, after you hit the button, retrieve you know a record back. So in those kind of cases, you can run into timing asynchronous. I think it's called a race condition. I don't know, I didn't pay attention in my distributed computing class in college, but I think it's called a race condition and those kind of bugs are very annoying because it's, the behavior is not consistent. So hopefully this is helpful. Uh, this is a quick video I wanted to do because it's been on my mind, something I've been thinking of um, recently. But in the future, I actually wanted to start it today, but I figured I would do a bit more planning so it's more coherent. But I want to do a series uh, that basically mimics a project, uh, especially if you work for an integrator. Uh, it would mimic the kind of the project life cycle, um, simulating a PO or like a functional requirements um, document and then translating from that to a project and maybe architecting some of the database, the back end, designing the front end. Just basically a beginner project from start to finish, uh, a complete example. I think other people have messaged me and said that that would be very useful. And I think looking back at you know my own development in uh, Ignition, as I've become a better developer, I think when I was beginning it would be very useful, especially moving from vision to perspective. It's a, it's a different way of developing. So I want to do a full example, break that up over several videos and kind of do a start to finish. Try to make it as real world as, as I can. So that's, that's in the works. I'm planning to do that soon. But Thank you for watching. I did not think this video would be this long. Hopefully what I was talking about makes sense. Uh, if you have any questions or if, uh, if you just want to tell me how dumb I am for running into this bug and using message handlers in this way to begin with, you're welcome to do that. Uh, but besides that, thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video.